appreciate everybody being here. Got a, got a great turnout. Hopefully everybody has found a seat. It's like a microphone explosion up here. You know what, Jeff? I got to say something. Not even Paul Feinbaum had as many microphones as you have up here. So that's... Uh, I do want to recognize uh, Rex's son, Evan, who is 15 over here. Let's give Re uh, Evan a round of applause. Stand up. Stand up. Evan, uh, Evan was sharing with me before the meeting that Dad, this past Friday, started talking to him about the birds and the bees. <laughs> but Evan had to say, sorry, Dad, it's time to go to church because you have to just start another time. So <laughs> Unless you don't get that one, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> it means he started Friday and he's still talking to Sunday. That's OK. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, I, did not, I do want to say, Jeff, thank you so much for coming, and, and maybe we'll have you back in a few years from now. That's, I remember, I'll never forget the look that uh, you had and uh, Bobby had on your face when Rex was up here doing the, uh, the used to nut deal. So, uh, but it, anyway, good job, Rex. Uh, just real quick, too, what do these names have in common? Uh, Will Muschamp, Jimbo Fisher, Dana Holgerson, uh, Gary Patterson, Chris Peterson. All guys that are coaching teams in the uh, top 25 currently that were here in Little Rock for the Brawls Award. They want to make mention, I see Jeff Hildebrand back there in the back. December 10th is the Brawls Award. We're proud to have it here. And there's some great assistant coaches who've gone on to be great head coaches. <laughs> Just sharing that. Just thought I'd put that out there. Just thought of it. Anyway. It's December 10th, so we hope you can be there for that and support them in a big way because it's always a great event for, uh, for the city of Little Rock and, uh, of course, for the state of Arkansas in honor of uh, Coach Brawls. Uh, we'll go ahead and get Jeff up here. I know uh, Jim's going to introduce me. I will just say this. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, I guess it was, I forget what day it was in April, that uh, Jeff became a centerpiece in the world of, of athletics. Uh, not just football, but in athletics in general. And Jeff's Long, Jeff Long's name became a household name. And uh, made some difficult decisions and probably has earned his money more than any athletic director in the country since then. So I certainly respect the fact that Jeff always stands up and says, I'm coming to Little Rock, never any hesitation. David, I'm going to do Q&A. Uh, nothing, nothing's off limits. And so I do say, uh, you know, Jeff, I think that's, that's something I really uh, admire about you. Uh, I guess the question is, which, which question will be asked first, the uniform or the coach? That's the, uh, <laughs> and Jeff always has something funny to say about Pepsi Remember? or Coke. Pepsi or Coke. <laughs> and, 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 and Jeff usually has something funny to say about me. You know, I am, it is with a countdown to 50. I have my birthday Saturday along with Hazel, and, and so uh, I will be 50 in about three, six, 364 days. I know, you don't have to say anything funny about that, but I think you did the puka shells last year, and you did my model <laughs> shot the year before you did that, and so um, sort of a difficult time right now. You don't have to be funny today. That's the good thing about it. <laughs> and in honor of Jeff, I did wear my uh, anthracite uniform today. This is the closest <laughs> I can get to it. I don't honor to you, Jeff. So without further ado, Jim Rasko, come up and give our guests a great introduction. <laughs> okay, today I'll keep my introduction brief so that you'll be able to hear less from me and more from our guest. Most of you already know a lot about his background. A high school quarterback at Fairmont East High in Kettering, Ohio. Then to college at Ohio Wesleyan, where he earned his degree in economics. Picked up three, excuse me, four letters in football and three in baseball. He started his postgraduate career in athletics as an assistant football coach at Miami of Ohio and was awarded his master's degree there. He moved on to football staff positions at Rice, North Carolina State, Duke, and then spent 10 years at the University of Michigan. Now let's fast forward through two years at Oklahoma, followed by four years as athletic director at the University of Pittsburgh. That brings us to the fall of 2007, when he was hired to be the new AD at the University of Arkansas officially to take over for Coach Broyles on January 1, 2008. But three weeks before he officially became the AD, he became a hero to all Razorback fans when on December 11, 2007, he hired Bobby Petrino. Soon he signed Dave Van Horn to a long-term contract. Shortly thereafter, all of us in this room were grateful when he extended the Razorbacks' relationship with War Memorial Stadium. Next, he helped create the series with Texas A&M, known as the Southwest Classic, uh, an annual event played in Jerry's Stadium. He didn't slow down. He formed Razorback Sports Properties. Then he negotiated a multi-year contract with Nike. On March 23, 2011, he signed Mike Anderson to a seven-year contract. And certainly all of you know the details of the $320 million Razorback Athletics Facilities Master Plan. 
Most recently, in the spring of 2012, the Donald W. Reynolds Foundation and its long-term chairman, Fred W. Smith, made a gift of $1,250,000 to the Razorback program in recognition of our guest speaker's leadership in Razorback athletics. He's come a long way in the past 30 years since he wore number seven and played quarterback for the Battling Bishops of Ohio Wesleyan University. <laughs> You know him as the Vice Chancellor for Intercollegiate Athletics and Director of Athletics at the University of Arkansas. Please welcome Jeff Long. Thank you all, thank you very much. Please, please sit down. Thank you, it uh, truly is an honor to be here. It's, it's always tough to follow Rex. I mean, <laughs> God, that's why it's so intimidating to come here to Little Rock. <laughs> If he doesn't lighten up on me, David, I may turn you down one of these years. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to thank David and, and Kelly Desain for the job they do, and certainly the, the board here, the Little Rock, Little Rock Touchdown Club, all you do for uh, football at multiple levels. Um, you know, football is a very special sport, and you guys support it at all levels, and certainly something all of you should be very proud of. And, and Lunsford, you know, you've uh, just been a great sponsor to this program, and I also wanted to say thank you for those kind words that you shared earlier. It means a lot to me and appreciate that very much. So, you know, I truly am uh, pleased to be here. I also have a good friend of mine who has become a friend of mine since coming here to Arkansas, and that's the uh, athletic director at UALR over here, Chris Peterson. He and I, a uh, round of applause for Chris. Besides having some of the toughest jobs in the country, um, we also share this. We both have freshman daughters at the University of Arkansas, so we're both very, very proud of that. His daughter, Blair, joined my daughter, Stephanie, at uh, the University of Arkansas this fall. I'm very proud to have them here tonight. We also wanted to uh, reference uh, a little event that happened earlier today. Uh, David mentioned it, but uh, earlier this morning, uh, we recognized the um, the Ekman family. You all know the tragic passing of Garrett of just about a year ago, and certainly uh, that was a tragedy. And we, uh, it takes those kind of things to help us, uh, unfortunately, focus on what really is important in life. And you know, the the Ekman family with Danny and Michelle and uh, Garrett's sister Megan uh, have really been inspirational t to me personally. Um, their courage, their strength their faith in God has uh, just meant a lot to all of us at the University of Arkansas. You know, many of you may not have known Garrett before this tragedy, but in the days and weeks after, you learned what an exceptional young man uh, he was. And uh, we miss him, we will miss him uh, forever, and he was uh, just a delightful young man. But the, the family, uh, showing their true character, wanted to uh, always remember Garrett and his legacy at the University of Arkansas. So they have established through their foundation, the Garrick Edmund Foundation, a $100,000 scholarship to be given to first a, uh, a University of Arkansas football student athlete, one that uh, preferably played tight end and uh, was a walk-on who earned a scholarship. So this morning, we uh, accepted that, uh, that pledge and signed an agreement that established the Garrett Ekman Memorial Scholarship. And we have the Ekman family with us today, and i just like to ask them to stand. I'm so very, very proud and blessed to have them. Thank you very much. They, they, are, they are indeed a very special family from here in central Arkansas, and, and please uh, hope that you will find it in your hearts to seek out the, the Ekman family and, and possibly make a contribution to this very worthy uh, cause in, in honor of Garrett. Um, before I move on to the, to the issues at hand, I also want to, to uh, just briefly recognize um, someone else who uh, has left the, this earth, earth recently. Uh, many of you were just starting to get to know Matt Turner, the uh, news anchor here in Little Rock, who had spent a number of years in, in Northwest Arkansas. Uh, Matt was an exceptional individual uh, from Arkadelphia. Again, loved the Razorbacks, um, reported uh, on the Razorbacks, uh, and really became a friend of mine in, in Northwest Arkansas. He uh, died tragically uh, about a week ago. Uh, in here near Little Rock here and again just another 
indication of someone that uh, really cared and loved his state, loved the University of Arkansas, and wore that Razorback right out there for everybody to see. And we will miss Matt Turner. I'm really sorry that this community didn't get to know him like uh, we knew him in Northwest Arkansas. And our thoughts and prayers continue uh, with his wife, Julie, and their, uh, I think, less than two-year-old daughter, Presley. So uh, we think of them. And then one last thing before we move on is, you know, a, a, a young man that you may not know to, to see him, but you certainly uh, read his uh, read his articles in the uh, Arkansas Democrat uh, Gazette, uh, Tom Murphy. Uh, Tom is a, a regular in Northwest Arkansas covering the hogs, and, and he lost his mother, Patricia. And again, uh, everybody knows how special mothers are. So again, I wanted to say our hearts and prayers go out to them. And Wally Hall wrote in his recent column that these will be our losses and God's gain, and he's exactly right about that. And thank you. Well, I've already learned a few things already this morning. I always enjoy coming to Little Rock, and I learned so much. Uh, first of all, I learned that Paul Feinbaum actually has nice things to say about people. <laughs> Is that true? I, 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 I'm kind of shocked to hear that. The other one that kind of almost floored me, Evan, with all due respect, your dad's married? <laughs> God bless your mother. And, and you know, I brought something for you. <laughs> when he starts talking about the birds and bees, just look those down. All right, all right. Where am I? Where am I in this? Okay. On your table you will find an envelope. I hope you've followed the instructions. You've not opened it yet. But you know, we, we mentioned the uniforms and we've gotten a number of uh, kind letters, encouraging letters, um, people that just love the uniforms. And you know, occasionally we get some letters from people that don't like them. And usually it has something to do with the function of age, but I won't go there on that one. But I do want you to know, we get suggestions all the time about uniforms, about helmets, all those kind of things. Well, the one on your table is from a very special individual, former Razorback football player, one that you know I actually have great respect for. Well, if you would open that up, I want to show you what uh, what David Basil has suggested uh, we wear on our, our helmets uh, next year. And uh, take a good look. Open that up. Take a good look at that. Everybody see that? So David would like us to wear these home and away, home and away. And, and well, here's the thing. Here's the really, the really most unusual thing about this. It's the first time we've ever had a father-son recommendation. So look for those on the helmets next year. Our, our team is very excited about that. That is excellent. That is excellent. I like it. <laughs> all right. Well, let's move on to the issues at hand. And I, again, I thank all of you for being here and excited to be in Little Rock. It really is home away from home for me. I, I feel very comfortable in this club and appreciate it. I know there's going to be some good questions and we'll, we'll leave some time for that. Hey, oh, getting back in things I learned, I also learned that, um, well, I also understood that, John, where's Johnny from El Paso again? Where are you? Johnny, they told me you went to work for Paul Feinbaum. What? Did they give you the day off to be here? Okay. All right. And I also learned one other thing too. You know, I realize now why our football players like those gray uniforms so well. Has something to do with that shades of gray book? Oh, I, <laughs> I haven't read it. I don't know, David. I don't think so. <laughs> David told me he's read it five times. And there's like three of them, aren't there? There's like a series of three, yeah, right? Yeah. Ladies, you know? Yeah. yeah, he's had them five times. Okay. All right. Now we will get to some serious stuff here, but all right. Well, uh, obviously, you know, we're excited about being here and excited about our Razorback program. You know, I've uh, coming up, as uh, they pointed out earlier, coming up on five years of uh, being in this position, and I'm still uh, humbled and honored to uh, 
fill the role of uh, Frank Broyles and then also Bev Lewis who I took over for the women's athletics program as well and certainly we've had many many uh, successes and uh, very proud of the accomplishments of our athletic teams and certainly our administrative staff and our coaches and all the success that our student athletes are having and uh, I want to just share with you that that really is one of the things I'm most proud of and that is establishing what we call our mission at the University of Arkansas and Razorback Athletics. Uh, our mission truly is developing student athletes to their fullest potential through intercollegiate athletics. And that's a very short sentence, but it says a mouthful. It talks more about just winning, more than just winning on the field, but it talks about winning in the classroom, winning in the community, developing young people, developing their character, helping them prepare for the rest of their lives. And you know, we, and I say this all the time, we understand, we all know winning is very important. In every sport we have, we strive to be the very best. And that's one of the things that the University of Arkansas has that many, many programs don't. We compete nationally in just about every one of our 19 sports. So winning is very important to us and we'll never lose sight of that. But sometimes I think fans lose sight of about what we're really all about. It is more than just winning. Uh, while winning is a very important piece, but we're working and striving to help young people uh, grow as individuals and use intercollegiate athletics. Use it, not let it use you, use it to prepare yourself for the rest of your life. And we do that through the sport that they play, that our young people play. There's so many lessons to be learned and we talk about that. It's the laboratory, it's where we get challenged all the time in athletics. Certainly we've gone through adversity here in our football program. Certainly we're not where we expected to be when we started this season. But we didn't fold up our tent. We didn't say we're gonna take our ball and go home. We stood and we turned this negative into a positive. And that's truly what life is about. We all have adversity to overcome. And many times it's not public. You all know individually in your own families, in your own lives, you've had challenge. You've had to stand your ground. And that's what we're teaching our young people. We're teaching them about how to develop into quality people, how to develop character. And we're very proud about it. And, that, and that's really what our mission is all about. You know, the athletic winning is a piece of that, and raising funds is a piece of that, and representing the university in the state of Arkansas is a piece of that. Those are all very valuable pieces, and many, many more pieces that I don't uh, have time to mention here, but they all go into this thing that we call Razorback Athletics. It all goes into what you're all very proud of when you call those hogs, when you stand up and cheer the Razorbacks. And you know what? I'm more excited than I was five years ago to come here and lead this program because we've not begun to touch our potential. You know, we said that five years ago and people looked at me and said, you know, Coach Broyles did great things and he did. There's no question. He was a man of honor and integrity and built our program. But when we arrived and I put our new team together, we combined our, our men's and women's program we had even more to achieve. And we're well on our way to doing that. There will always be more to do in Razorback Athletics. And of course, along the way, we're gonna have setbacks. We're gonna to step to the side. We're not gonna progress as quickly as we want to. And we're not gonna be as good as we want to be. But you know what? We're never gonna stop trying. We're never gonna take a step back. We're never gonna turn and run. We're gonna stand our ground, and then we're gonna to work to get back to where we all know we should be, and that's at the top. And we're working extremely hard to do that. And you know, when I look at this football team, and I try not to make excuses, and, and I, you know, I say that, and then, I'm, and then what I'm about to say may sound like excuses to you, and I hope it doesn't, but you know, we pride ourselves in not making excuses for where we are at this point. But you know, we had a football team that not only had to adjust to a new head football coach, which is a major adjustment in April before we head into this season with great expectations. We had to adjust to a new offensive coordinator, a new defensive coordinator, a new quarterbacks coach, a new defensive line coach, a new secondary coach, linebacker coach, and corners coach. So while some of those names didn't change, their positions they coached changed. So again, don't mean to make excuses, but it's taken some time for our young people to adjust. It's taken some time for our coaches to adjust. I think we've seen in the last couple weeks a program that's starting to get better. And I know some of you will say, well, wait a minute, you shouldn't have had to get better. You were supposed to be great to begin with. 
Well, you know what? We weren't. And we, maybe we weren't as good as we thought we were. But now we've kind of refocused ourselves. We know what's in front of us. We started to play like we expected to play. And any time you win a game on the road in the SEC, trust me, and I know Auburn's not uh, very good or they're a little bit down right now, but I'm telling you, when you enter a stadium like that and win in the SEC road game, it is a, it's a great accomplishment. And there'll be some other people that lose SEC road games that we don't expect. Okay, and then coming back, and obviously Kentucky's not the program, but we came out and took care of business. We played hard, and we took care of them in three quarters of a game. So, again, I think you're beginning to see the progress. I think you're beginning to see a team that we expected to see at the, the uh, beginning of the season. And I think there's something also I hope our fans will remember. You know, this is a, a team and coaching staff that had choices to make last April. You know, they could have, we had student athletes who could have transferred. They could have said, this is not what uh, we expected. This is not the coach I expected to play for. But you know what? Not one player left our program. It's remarkable. Not one player. And you ask why, and I say because I think they believed in what we were doing. I think they believe in the program we're running. I think they believed in the, in the football program we've established. And they know it's more than one person. And it always is. Just like an athletic program, it's so much more than me. Well, I get the credit or get the blame. Uh, we have a department, and it's many, many people involved in making up our program. And our student athletes knew that. Not one of them left. And also say a great uh, statement of our coaches. You know, our coaches, uh, some of whom had just arrived in Fayetteville and had this change, they could have left us. They could have left for more stable situations because they didn't know what was going to happen here after this season. But you know, not one of them chose to leave. Not one of them. And to me, again, that's a commitment they made to our program. That's a commitment they made to our student athletes. And that's what we talk about in our program. Our decisions begin with our student athletes at the forefront of our decisions. And we, we do that in every single decision we make. We start with how does it affect our student athletes? So when I made those decisions, you know what I was thinking about our student athletes, and I'm not embarrassed to admit that. I was thinking about this team, this group of young men, and I think we're going to battle through it. I think they're going to learn things for their lives. They're going to learn life's lessons through this season. We still have quite a bit of this season to go, and we're going to put together and make a great effort as we move forward here. Excuse me one second. One of the other things I want to assure you folks are is that we embrace high expectations. That's not going to change. You know, five years ago, we probably had a little bit different expectation for our program than maybe we do now. Uh, and we're very proud of that. We're not going to retreat from those expectations. Going forward, we have still has our goal to win a national championship again at the University of Arkansas, something that hasn't been done. Thank you. That goal remains something we haven't done since 1964, but I honestly believe we're closer than we have been in a long, long time. You know, we're going to make the right decision on a football coach going forward. You can count on that. We're putting a tremendous amount of effort in this. And also know that you all should be very proud that our program is a very different one than five years ago. Uh, we built the things behind the scenes that maybe fans don't necessarily see. We've strengthened our academic support program. We've invested in people to work with our young people to help them achieve their degree and progress. You know, a football player or any student athlete, they're no good to us if they're not in school. So important, it's very important, the academic piece. And we built a structure that maybe wasn't there before. We've invested in human resources, and uh, you probably be, and I'll talk about it in just a minute, we, we're going to invest in a physical facility for academic support as well. But we built the things that you need that a coach is going to be looking for. We built our strength and conditioning programs. We've built our uh, athletic training sports management or sports uh, medicine program. We've uh, invested in our team physicians that work with us. All of these are pieces that a coach looks for when they choose an institution. We've built those things. We've put those things in place. Through your support, through the Razorback Foundation, through all the Razorback season ticket holders, we've been able to get the resources to be able to put in our program to build our program. You know, we're, I think we're facilities-wise, we're one of the top programs in the country, probably top 10, maybe top five. When we're done building what we're going to build in the next few years with your help, uh, there's no question nobody will have anything better than we have across the board. 
Uh, our new football center will open in uh, this summer of 2013. We've already begun uh, practicing on our new football practice fields, uh, and those are a remarkable change from what we had to work with before. We're very proud of that. And again, because the fan base has been so passionate and so supportive, we've been able to build this program. The football center, when it's finished, will give us, honestly, the most efficient football operations area in the country. We will have our coaches' offices, our locker rooms, our training rooms, our indoor practice facility, our 100-yard weight room, our outdoor practice facilities, all in a central location. And if you know anything about NCAA rules, they put uh, priority on uh, the amount of time you can spend with their, your student athletes. We're becoming extremely efficient. We'll be able to maximize every minute we have with our young people to help them learn football and then also allow them to go off and, and learn their academic studies as well. So we have put those things in place and we have no doubt that we'll be able to attract a, a great coach coming in, in the future. Um, the other thing I want to say is I'm also going back to our own student athletes, uh, our football in particular, again, you know, they faced some real adversity. You know, we had high, high expectations. They lost some games. And, you know, many times young people, 17 to 22 or 23, you know, they're emotional. Uh, they may not respond the way we expect them to. Well, this group of young men did. They hung together. They didn't point blame. They didn't try to say it's this offense or that defense or this. They hung together. And it was tough because everybody around them were telling them how bad they were and how uh, they've let everybody down. But everybody in that locker room kept believing, kept working, and I guarantee you this, those football coaches and those student athletes have continued to work extremely hard to represent the University of Arkansas and the Razorback Nation. So I know it's tough when we lose, but I hope you will uh, respect them and honor them and come out and support them because, again, those young people had nothing to do with the issues that occurred last April. They have nothing to do with what's going to happen in the future here or hiring a new coach uh, or hiring the next coach but uh, support them. That's what it's all about, the young people in the program. That's what you sh you're there on Saturdays to cheer for. It's those young, young people. And I will tell you, I've gotten to know them up close and personal even more through the last months. And I'll tell you, you have a lot to be proud of in these young men. They are working extremely hard. Now, we're excited about be coming to, um, to Little Rock in a week and a half to War Memorial Stadium and taking on the Ole Miss Rebels. Uh, obviously, uh, they're a team that uh, is surprising people in the positive way, and I think we're going to be in for a great challenge and a great game in uh, War Memorial Stadium. And appreciate all the fans throughout the state who uh, are coming to this game. As David mentioned, uh, we have very few tickets left. It will be a sellout once again here. And uh, you know, the Rebels are six and zero. Well. I was told, I gotta admit, I'm not old enough to remember this, but some of you in this room are. You remember, Rex, the 1954 game, the six nothing victory over the old Miss Rev. <laughs> Rascal was there. Was there. Ra he was there. <laughs> 19, I knew there would be, and I have to admit, I was, I was told about it. I have heard about the Powder River play, though, before today. Yeah. But uh, I know that's an ex uh, you know, uh, exciting piece of our history that was played out right here in War Memorial Stadium. And uh, we hope that it's not a, well, we'll take a 6-0 victory. Don't, 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 don't be misunderstood. We'll take a 6-0 victory. We'll take any win we can get. But on October 27th, I know we'll have a, a great crowd here. And I also want to just say thanks. So there are members of the War Memorial Stadium Commission here in the room, you know, led by uh, Kevin Crass. And I want to thank Kevin. And he has been just a great, great supporter of mine and the University of Arkansas, and we have worked so well together. You know, he took over for a very difficult guy, <laughs> a guy that, you know, everybody told me, you'll be so glad when Gary Smith <laughs> is out of this chair and you'll get to work with Kevin, Kevin Crass. And I'm very honored to have both Kevin and Gary Smith. Please stand, <laughs> gentlemen, please. But we have a great, great relationship with the War Memorial Commission and really appreciate all their support. And, you know, as we turn towards the future, obviously we will be looking to hire the next coach. And I want to finish uh, so I can take some questions here. 
But certainly, uh, you know, I'm not going to discuss candidates at the podium. That wouldn't be appropriate. You all know that in order for us to attract the, the most uh, highly qualified and best coach for us, you know, we've got to conduct that confidentially. Uh, young uh, coaches who are at other institutions or other uh, NFL programs or whatever the case might be, you know, they don't they don't want their name associated with jobs unless they're getting that job. So, you know, we have to do that. I understand the passion. I understand the rumors. I understand sports talk radio. I mean, it's great. No, it's great for people to talk about. I mean, it is. So, I mean, that just shows the passion. So I, I never get upset about that. But just understand, I'm not in position that, that I'm going to confirm this rumor. And I would tell you 99 0.9% of it is just rumor and things people have, have made up to uh, get on the airwaves and get on the social media. But, you know, we're going to conduct this very privately, very professionally, and that's all in all of our best interests to attract the, the next great coach at the University of Arkansas. I will share with you just a few, uh, uh, you know, characteristics of a coach I'm looking for. And they're broad, but I will tell you, get you a sense of what I think is important. First will be someone who shares the passion for success that our fans do. And again, you all, many of you have only lived in this state, you've only cheered for the Razorbacks. Those of you have been out at other institutions, we may know how, how special this fan base is more than even you know. Because we've been in those places where they've got multiple schools in their state. This is truly special to have really one program in this state that everybody supports across the four corners. That makes us very special. That makes us attractive to coaches who want to come in, compete against the best. And certainly in the SEC, you get the chance to compete against the best. You know if you beat the best in this conference, you're playing for a national championship. And again, we're looking for coaches who are not intimidated by that. We're not looking for coaches who say, well, I'm starting out third in the SEC West. No, we're looking for coaches who are going to rise up to that challenge and say, we're going to take this program and we're going to lead it to a national championship. Uh, we're going to actually someone who embraces those high expectations. That was, that's what we need. Somebody who has that pa passion. Somebody who has discipline and accountability in their program. Discipline and accountability in their program. That's very important to us. Help us develop the young men in our football program. They'll lead our student athletes and our coaches with honesty and integrity on and off the field. That's critically important for when you go back and think about what we're doing, you think about our mission, we're here to help our student athletes achieve their potential through intercollegiate athletics. So that's very important to us. Obviously, someone who embraced this state and what it means to be a Razorback and uh, someone who understands the high expectations we have in our program and they also know we have high expectations of our football coach in our program. I've shared with you a great deal about our program, and I also think that we have a lot to offer any head football coach that's interested in the things that are truly important. So I'm excited about the process. Uh, that will pick up as we get closer to the end of the season, and I'm uh, looking forward to the, the challenge of bringing the next head football coach here at the University of Arkansas. With that, I will say thank you, and then we're going to open it up for a few questions. I'm going to ask the first question. Yes. Um, Jeff, you've hired several coaches now since you've been the athletic director of Arkansas. I, I know you can't talk about this search uh, with particular details, but have you learned, what have you learned about the whole coaching search from what you've done in the past and what you're dealing with now? Any, any things that you've been surprised to learn or, or that you didn't know was there? Well, I, I'm not sure if I'm getting to, to your question, but I will tell you, you know, through these processes of recruiting coaches, head coaches in particular, um, you, you know, you can learn who, who's looking for a challenge, who's looking to compete, and then who's looking to settle in and take a job. Because, you know, whether it's the head football coach or whether it's the, the volleyball coach, you know, they're all paid extremely well. So you got to look for somebody who's interested in a job more than just how much money it makes. You're interested in the job because they have a passion to work with young people. They have a passion to compete. They have a compassion, a passion to win. So you know, when you go out and interview, people say, well, "What are you looking for? How hard?" Well, it's you know, it's a difficult process, and you know, there's a lot of challenges. But when you sit down with people, particularly coaches, high-achieving coaches, you can figure out pretty quickly. 
who are the ones that really have a passion for what they do. And it's really not about the money. It's about leading young people, helping them develop, and helping them win championships. And that, that's really what is exciting about that process as well. I will tell you, most ADs, and I'm sure Chris would agree, no one enjoys doing a high-profile search for a football coach or a basketball coach. They're not enjoyable process. They're enjoyable when they're done and you've hired the right person. Uh, it's a grueling process, and but but again, it's one as an AD, you better accept the challenge, and I do accept the challenge. And you know, I, I would want you all to look at me for that competitive spirit, that passion I have for our program, and I believe that's out there, and that's important to our next coach as well. Other questions? Yes, sir. Coach, uh, you mentioned I know you said it's not about the money, but that still is a factor in attracting the coach. First, is the money there, and secondly, what's your philosophy? Well, uh, financial resources are always important to any search. Uh, certainly, we've seen those salaries for coaches explode, and they have. Uh, but I'll also say that, uh, that our athletic program, through the support of all of you out there, through the Razorback Foundation, um, we've, uh, we've got the resources to attract a high-level coach. And again, I would tell you, someone asked me the other day, I'll just share this to clear this, someone said I was quoted as saying I was going to make the next head football coach at the University of Arkansas the highest paid uh, football coach in the country. That's simply not true. That would be an irresponsible statement to make. And we value our resources uh, very, very, very much. We value what you all have given to us through your ticket purchases, through your donations. We'd n I'd never make a statement like that. Again, um, we're going to make a judgment, and we'll have to judge the resources versus the coach. And certainly, um, we've put ourselves in good position to be able to have the financial resources to hire a quality coach. Yes, sir. Uh, coach, has there been significant interest from fairly high profile people? You don't have to tell me who, but you know, I mean, the <laughs> well, trying to judge who you all think would be a quality candidate is really, really difficult because I've, I've gotten letters and emails from everything from high school coaches to retired coaches to, um, you know, NFL head coaches. So there's everything in between. Uh, I, again, I think because I think the answer to that question is uh, with the way we build our program, with the um, University of Arkansas and its academic reputation growing, uh, our, our uh, enrollment growing, the way our athletic program has grown. You know, we finished in the top 20 of the Directors' Cup last year, so we've got a broad-based program. So I think really the answer to that question is um, we've prepared ourselves. We put the University of Arkansas and Razorback Athletics and Razorback Football in a prominent place, and I think uh, there's no doubt that we will have uh, top-level uh, coaches interested in our job. The biggest challenge, as you all might expect, is trying to ascertain you know, who truly is interested and who's trying to uh, help the situation they're in. So that's the real challenging part. It's the really challenging part of an athletic director is, you know, who's truly interested in this job and all that the Razorback program has to offer, and who truly just wants to make sure their current employer appreciates them even more. So that's a challenge. You know, it's an obvious challenge. Uh-oh, there he is. There he is. I see him, Megan. Come on. Come on up. Come on, Johnny. <laughs> I can write one, Johnny. <laughs> well, Johnny, pardon me for correcting you, uh, but I did not fire Walt Harris. Uh, Walt left to become the AD at, or the head coach at Stanford. Uh, I was not at Oklahoma when Howard Snellenbarger coached for Come a year. On, he, Come on, Johnny! Come on, Johnny! He was all, he was already gone, so I, I so I learned nothing from that, and I learned nothing from Barry Walter. So that was easy.
discussion about Bobby Petrino coming back into coaching. Could you elaborate on any contractual limitations he would have had with us as to where he could go? Yeah. The question was, uh, uh, there's speculation about Bobby Petrino being a coach somewhere else, and is there any contractual uh, obligation to us? Absolutely not. When you are terminated for cause, you have no contractual obligation with the institution. So he's free to do whatever he would like. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, I know you probably not heard this before, but one of the criteria you, I wish you would put in on a new coach, and that's to know our colors. <laughs> So is there a question? <laughs> Thank you. Got any other questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Long before you came here, A S U has been wanting to play us. They do. <laughs> <laughs> to me, it seemed like you could have a win-win. We get their coach, and they get to play us. <laughs> I don't follow that logic, but I do follow Rex's logic in that. If we were to play other state schools, they wouldn't have this perfect undefeated record, and I would not want to mess that up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, timetable on a new coach. Uh, obviously, nothing will happen until after the end of the season, and then uh, we'll work very diligently to move as quickly as we can following the end of our regular season. Uh, but again, there's so many variables, it's, it's, it's hard to say. You know, there are a number of, of other university searches that last till after bowl games. I think the preference is to, to hire a coach before bowl games or, or uh, run their course. But again, every search takes on its own characteristics. And so I won't put myself in that box. But I would just tell, tell you that I'm hopeful that we will have a decision made within a couple weeks after the end of the regular season. Yes, sir. Uh, you know what, I haven't even had a chance to uh, visit with my staff. We, we actually meet on Wednesdays, and so on Wednesday morning, that will be one of our uh, topics, when we can reschedule that recognition of our scholar athletes and also our, uh, you know, we were set to recognize our uh, men's cross-country indoor and outdoor track programs for their triple crown SEC a victory last year and in addition to that they won what we call our Lee Spencer Cup award which is our given to our program and our 19 pro 15 because some of those are combined but 15 programs that complete the most amount of community service and other uh, kind of things in our men's track program not only won the triple crown in the SEC they also won our competition for community service Chris Buckingham has done a wonderful job uh, taking over for coach McDonald obviously another very challenging uh, position to uh, fill but Chris has done a wonderful job and uh, I think you may even see one of those uh, national championships come back to Fayetteville in not too distant future yes sir how are we doing Well, no, I, there are no plans to do another RSVP type program with our football seating, right, Chris? I'm looking to my, uh, my our new executive. Let me uh, introduce again uh, Chris Wyrick, our new executive director. First of all, you know, I admire men who take over uh, for people who are legends. And, and obviously, you know, I mentioned Chris Bucknam taking over for Coach McDonald. I mean, when I went out on that coaching search, there were very few men who had the courage to step up and say, I can, I'm going to come to the University of Arkansas and replace uh, John McDonald. So, you know, and, and certainly I had my, uh, my uh, challenge with replacing Frank Broyles. But Chris Wyrick is also someone who has stepped up to a challenge because, you know, Harold Horton has run our Razorback Foundation for the last four years, I believe it was, and just done a remarkable job. And, you know, like me, you can't, you don't replace, 
you don't replace Frank Broyles, you don't replace uh, John McDonald, you don't replace Harold Horton, but Chris Weirich has stepped up to that challenge and I uh, appreciate Chris is with us today. Chris, please be recognized. Get to know Chris. Uh, let's, do, let's do two more questions. I'm, I get to ask one more. Uh, with, the, with, with, with the unique situation uh, the football program finds itself in, I've had this asked a lot, recruiting. You know, we hear that there are commitments being given. And uh, has there been any directive from you to the staff as far as you go ahead and you get 25 commitments knowing that a new coach is coming? How is the whole recruiting situation handled in this unique situation? Well, it's a great question, and, and we will continue to recruit extremely hard. Again, when this, when we sat down with this staff, again, last April when we put it together, you know, we made some commitments to each other, and they are recruiting extremely <coughs> hard for the University of Arkansas, and I have no question that they're on the right kind of student athletes, and they're continuing to recruit. Obviously, there are uh, prospects out there that are going to kind of wait to see what happens, but, you know, everybody gets concerned about recruiting, and, and rightfully so, but again, I think if everything goes like we expect you know we'll have our new coach named and we'll be able to make up a lot of ground in recruiting uh, in December. Can the can, can if the new coach comes in Jeff if he comes in what if he has a different philosophy in, in the types of kids that are recruited could that be a conflict at all? Well certainly we will honor those commitments and we'll work with those coaches because you're right that coach may have a different philosophy one side or the other and remember it's a two-way street because those prospects may say hey this is not what I was you're not running the offense or the right. defense that I was expecting to come to. So, you know, we th those are verbal commitments, as you know, and, and we would work with the young people, and we always have, and that's what we would continue to do. And, again, every situation is going to be a little bit unique in those, uh, in those relationships. But I have, standing, standing here today, I don't have a concern that we're uh, losing lots of ground in recruiting because I think that those who are interested in Arkansas are kind of hanging there to see what happens. And then, again, when we hire the right coach for our program, uh, we'll be able to work through that very quickly. One more question. Okay, one more right here. I got a yes or no question. Are we going to keep two games in Little Rock or is that eventually going to go away? Well, I, that I, I really can't give you a yes or no answer. I can give you this. I can tell you we're going to keep two games in Little Rock through 2016 because that's what we're contracted for. So, you know, we've said before that that's something that we're going to have to discuss and resolve going forward. But, again, I think i still got four more years before we'll have to make that, that difficult decision, whatever it may be, because there are people, obviously, you all know that have lived it. There's people on both sides of that fence. And certainly we've had a great, great relationship with Central Arkansas, War Memorial Stadium, Kevin Crass, all the commissioners. You know we love coming down here to play. We talk about that a, a great deal. The, the hog walk at War Memorial Stadium is like nothing else I've ever experienced. And so there are many, many great reasons for remaining here. So I can't give you a, a, a yes or no answer to that. Certainly all the folks that are involved will be making those decisions in the year to come. Okay. Well, again, thank you very, very much for being here. Appreciate everybody being here. Jeff Long, everybody. Aikman family, thank you for being here. Congratulations on the scholarship. Mike Sly next week, everybody. Mike Sly. 50-yard line members, if you want to get your picture with Jeff, come on up. Evan, come on and get your picture back.